Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on PACT and JavaScript. The goal of this tutorial is to help you connect your PACT development environment to a front-end application. Throughout this tutorial, we'll cover each of the important steps required to get you running with a functioning full-stack blockchain application that runs on PACT. Here's a quick look at what we'll cover. First, I'll introduce the application you'll build. From there, you'll install each of the dependencies required for the project. Then, you'll move on to set up the project. Afterwards, we'll view the project files and go over how the application works. From there, we'll take a closer look at how PACT and JavaScript code is working. And finally, we'll take a moment to review everything we went over. So there's a lot coming up, but hopefully you're excited to learn about PACT and JavaScript. After this tutorial, you'll be in a great place to start building your own blockchain applications using PACT. Throughout this tutorial, we'll get you set up with a demo app we built ourselves. We call it the Todo MVC app. It's a simple to-do app you can use to track and manage tasks. While you might not need to track your tasks on a blockchain, the tools and setup required to make this app will help you really understand the fundamentals before moving on to more complicated applications. Here's what the app looks like. As you can see, it allows you to add, complete, delete, or work with to-dos in a variety of other ways. You'll get a chance to play around with it for yourself once you get it up and running. First, I'd like to briefly show you how it's working. In this case, it's built using JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and we're also using React. PACT handles the back end of the application and communicates with JavaScript using the PACT Lang API. Any data created by the application is stored in a SQLite database. This SQLite database is something PACT provides as a sort of emulated blockchain that gives you a great way to test your application. In a live application, you would instead deploy this to a live blockchain, which would then store the data for you. But for testing, this SQLite database is a great way to get started. So that's the basics of how this application works. We'll get into the details as you get set up with this app for yourself. Let's get started with this application by installing the project's dependencies. The documentation for getting up and running with the Todo MVC can be found on this GitHub page. If you'd like to go at it for yourself, you can follow along with this documentation, and I'll walk through each of these steps now. More specifically, you'll need to have PACT and Node.js installed. You'll then need to clone the project repo into your local environment and install the remaining dependencies using npm install. These dependencies include things like the PACT Lang API. So first, you might already have PACT installed, but take a moment to check your version. For this application, you'll need PACT 3.0. If it's anything lower than version 3.0, make sure to install the newest version of PACT. You can do this by running brew install cadena-io slash PACT slash PACT. Next, to create this and any JavaScript application, you'll need to install Node.js. Head to the Node.js website and install any version greater than 8.11.4 for your operating system. You can check your Node version by typing Node V in your terminal. If you'd like to update to the latest version of Node, type npm at latest-g. Finally, you need to clone the GitHub repo for this project to your local environment. Navigate to the directory you'd like to create the project in and type git clone, followed by the project repo. After installing the to-do MVC, change into the packed to-do MVC master folder. From there, install each of the remaining project dependencies using npm install. These dependencies are included in the package.json file and include many of the tools required to run the application, as well as the packed lang API, which will allow packed and JavaScript to communicate with each other. Okay, so at this point you have the dependencies installed, but you don't have the project up and running yet. To do that, you'll need to set up a few more things. You can start the packed server, seed some data into the database, then finally you can start the web app. I'll do each of these things now. To start, you can run the packed server. From your terminal, run npm run start colon packed. You should see that this initializes packed SQLite on port 9001 and creates the application's tables. This command does a few important things and it's useful to know how it works. Let's take a brief look now. Keep the server running and open a new terminal, then type atom period to open this project. Starting the PACT server created this log folder. The log folder will hold all the database files used to store the application's data. Each time you stop the server and restart it, it will remove this folder and create a new one, refreshing the application's data. Next, back at the terminal, you'll see that this called the server.conf file. You'll find that here in the project. As you can see, this is what specifies that the application is running on port 9001 
and is using the log folder as both the log and persistence directory. It also specifies the pragmas and verbose setting. Feel free to leave these as they are for other applications, but you can choose to change them for whatever makes most sense for you. Now that you've run the PEC server, you're ready to seed the blockchain with some data. You can do this by heading back to the terminal, opening a new terminal window, and running npm run pact colon seed. As you'll see, this adds data to the database into the port 9001 that had been initiated by the PAC server. The initial seed data will include the status and the response shown here as a hash value. You can check to see that this data has been logged by going back to the terminal window that's running on the server. There it is. Similar to when you ran the server, you'll see that seeding the database calls another file, initialize to dos.sh. Back in the project, you'll find this file here. You might recognize this file format from an earlier tutorial. What it does is load the todos.pact contract by making a send request with the load todos.yaml files. Looking at load todos.yaml, you can see the code file to do admin keyset, key pairs, and nonce that is loaded by initialize todos.sh. And finally, you can see how both start pact and pact seed are working by looking into the package.json file. Under scripts, you can see that start pact is set to call the server.conf file and that pack seed is set to call the initialize to dos.sh file. Finally, it's time to start the web application. To do this, open another terminal within your directory and type npm start. This should open up your browser in localhost 3000 and give you access to all the app's functionality. From here, you can add a to-do, delete a to-do, or do anything else. Try adding a to-do then check back to the server again to see that it's properly logging your data into the blockchain. In my application, I'll add the following tasks. Learn Pact and complete Pact and JavaScript tutorial. Next, I'll check off the Learn Pact task. Looking back at the Pact server, I can see that all of this data is logging correctly into the database and returning a hash representation of the data. Great, so at this point, the application is set up and running correctly. Now it's time to go in and see how it all works. To view these files, open a new terminal within the project directory and type atom period to open up the project in atom. Within the project folder are each of the files installed from the project repo, the dependencies installed with npm install, and the files you created for yourself. Most of these files are specific to the front end of this web app, but the ones unique to the packed application are the log folder and the packed folder. View the log folder you created earlier to see that it's now filled with SQLite files. These files make up the emulated blockchain that you can use to create tables and store or retrieve data. The packed folder contains the .packed and .repl files that build, run, and test the smart contract. In here, you'll see todos.packed and todos.repl. Inside of the source folder, you'll see the front-end code for this application, including components, HTML, JSX, and CSS files, this is a React application, but the front end could use any library or framework that you prefer. If you're unfamiliar with React, you can visit their website to get started with React applications. So that's the basic layout of this application. Throughout the rest of this tutorial, we'll focus on Pact and JavaScript and how they interact with one another in this app. To understand how each of the UI elements are working with the database, take some time now to view the Pact smart contract. As you'll see, there's a single to-do table that you can access using a variety of functions as shown here. It has three rows, including title, completed, and deleted, that have the following data types, string, boolean, and boolean. To interact with that table, the smart contract also has six functions. Each of the titles are pretty self-explanatory, but as a quick overview, the functions are new to-do, toggle to-do status, edit to-do, delete to-do, read to-do, and read to do's. While some of this code should hopefully look familiar to you from earlier tutorials, I wanted to give you a quick refresher. Here's a closer look at the new to do function. The function new to do adds a to do using the title input generated by the user. The application assigns the title a specific ID and uses that to generate the title as specified by the user. The final two rows added to the table are an initial, completed, and deleted status of false. And that's about it. A lot of the other functions are pretty similar, so hopefully you don't have too hard of a time working through them. All right, so having looked at the smart contract code, we can now take a look at the JavaScript. To get started, navigate to source components to do app.jsx. 
Within this file, you'll see a lot of the functionality that's used to connect JavaScript to Pact. First, note that aside from a few standard React imports, this file also imports Pact from the Pactlang API, as well as the to-do item and to-do footer. There's also a few constants set that you'll see used throughout the functions below, including kp, which calls a specific function within the Pactlang API to generate a key pair. There's also the API host and constants related to the to-do state within the database. Each of the functions throughout this JavaScript file are related to those you saw in both the smart contract and the UI. Here's a quick overview of how each of their functions are related. Get to dos calls read to dos add calls new to do toggle calls toggle to do status and as you can see there's a pattern here where from within the function in javascript you can see the function it's calling so take a minute now to go through the rest of the functions to try and figure out how they're associated to pact but for now let's look at one example in detail in this case let's look at how add calls new to do from to dos.pact add is taking in the title as input by the user in the application from there, this function is split into two main parts. The top part is setting up the data you'll send to Pact, and the bottom part is making the actual call to Pact, sending the code you wrote above. Here's a look at how the data is constructed in the top part. Before sending this to Pact, the function sets a constant named UUID that utilizes the UUIDv4 library that was imported at the top of the file. This just makes it easier to generate and track new unique IDs. Next, another constant is set named command object. This is used as an object to specify information you'd like to include in the API call. Within the command object, we specify the packed code along with the key pairs. We start with the packed lang API and use the call packed.lang.make expression. Make expression is a helper function for constructing native packed commands. In this case, that's valuable because it allows you to call the function new to do from to dos.pact and to specify the inputs of UUID and title. After the packed code, you'll see the generated key pair. This is done using the constant kp, which, as you've seen above, uses pact.crypto.gen key pair to generate a key pair. As always, you can see more about this using the Pact Lang API website. It generates both a public and secret key as a string. You may recognize the public key as the hash value that was returned earlier in the terminal when you were first playing with the to-do app. And that's it. From there, we can move on to the second part of this function. Here, you'll see it starts with pact.fetch.send. This command is a request to execute a command on the pact server. As a note, there's other pact.fetch functions, including local, poll, and listen. Each of these have slightly different use cases that you can explore in the documents. In this function, pact.fetch.send includes the command object built above, along with a specified API host. This API host is the constant set above and is the local host 9001 that you saw the Pact server initiate from your terminal earlier. Once that's done, the to-do is in the database, but it actually isn't going to show up on the website for the user. That's where this last line comes in. After sending the data to the database, this line calls get to dos, which is another function in this JavaScript file. This function is what fetches the data from the database and displays it on the website. It looks like a lot, but having seen the add function in depth, see if you can parse out what's going on in this function. Similarly, many of the functions in this JavaScript file are in some way tied to Pact using the Pactlang API. The pattern of most of these API calls and interactions should be possible to work out. It can take some time, but using the Pactlang API documentation and the review we went over here, you'll get a lot of great experience by working out the rest of these functions for yourself. All right, so that was a lot, but at this point, you should be in a good place to continue experimenting with the to-do MVC application. Try changing the look and feel to make it your own. Later, you can try tweaking the functionality of it using Pact and JavaScript. And finally, you can try writing your own functions to extend the functionality of this application to do whatever you'd like. As a quick recap, you installed each of the dependencies required to create a full stack blockchain application with Pact. From there, you set up the to-do MVC project, investigated the project files, and then dove into the details of how Pact and JavaScript communicate using the Pactlang API. After getting comfortable with this application, you'll be in a great place to build apps of your own for entirely different use cases. So good luck, and I can't wait to see what you build using your new skills with Pact and JavaScript.